everybody, this is Perch, and it's easy to get caught up in the little things. The little things being uh, stuff that doesn't really matter, uh, stuff that will take a lot of your energy, a lot of time, a lot of effort, but give you really nothing in return. It's easy to get caught up with that. Keep in mind there's various forces, social media being one of them, that is encouraging you to do this. It's encouraging you to get caught up in the little things. Why? Well, because it means a lot to them. They get to monetize it. They get to gain value of it. They're, they're profiting off of whatever kind of nonsense you're getting yourself into. But you're not getting any value of it. You're, you're getting nothing but just pain and stupidity. Um, so th this is kind of continuing in the uh, overall saga of uh, what I would call Tom Taylor and uh, how well is Superman selling. Uh, this is a really easy one. It's, uh, it's selling comics. It's not selling amazing. It's not selling at the level of, say, Tom Taylor's deceased or other things that Tom Taylor has done. Um, if you look at the, the charts of what's coming in, it's not selling as well as, say, that um, Dark Ages of DC or the Dark Knights of God, whatever. The, the, the Tom Taylor medieval ages, what if the superheroes were there kind of comic. Um, it, it, you know, I think Nightwing is selling better than Superman. Um, but it's selling copies. It's not selling zero copies. It is, if you run the numbers, profitable. It's bringing in more money than it's spending. Um, but at the end of the day, unless you're a DC comic shareholder, um, how much money it's bringing in really doesn't terribly interest, I, I don't know, anyone. I mean, for me, the places where as a, as a customer or as a fan, I start to get really interested in the sales numbers other than just the nerdy activity of kind of going through the, the details is if it's radically losing money to the point that it has the potential to tank or dump other comics, or if it's wildly making money, if it's selling over a hundred thousand copies, if it's, you know, burning down the, the stores in those cases, um, that's interesting. It's interesting because it tells you, you know, what you should keep doing or what you should do more of it. It gives, it's informative. So that's kind of how I look at it. Uh, but uh, the, the curious part of it is how invested uh, both Taylor and Taylor's detractors seem to be into wanting to make this case. And the, 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 eventually you have to ask yourself, why? Why for any of them? So, you know, if you're seeing this on a screen, you know, here's somebody who's, uh, well, well, first off, okay, so you look at this and here's Taylor uh, showing you a little, you know, screenshot of... Um, you know, what appears to be Amazon uh, sales. Now, the screenshot that he's showing here is pretty misleading in the sense that the Amazon numbers fluctuate wildly. In fact, at the time where I went to Amazon to kind of look and see what was going on, um, it, the, these, were, these were not the numbers. It had shifted. Amazon, you know, seems to change not by the minute, but certainly by the hour. I'm not, I'm not honestly sure how often it changes, but it changes many, many times during the day, at least once an hour, the rankings move around. And if we're really going to be honest about the Amazon rankings, uh, what you will find is the stuff that typically dominates the charts. It's typically number one in superhero graphic novels or comics tends to be uh, things like Watchmen, things like, uh, you know, the Return of the Dark Knight, uh, things that are attached to movies and Primer. Of course, we can't forget about DC Comics Primer which uh, has been number one you know, off and on for the better course of two years on this site, uh, which, again, is, is a message to someone. I mean, I know for all the people, what's, what's interesting about Primer as, a, as just an aside is that this features a girl superhero, right? She's got paint-based powers, which are, uh, I think, I, I've heard people when I interviewed uh, one of the creators to Primer on this channel, and I've talked about that book, Several of the commenters came in to tell me that uh, Primer is woke trash. Now, again, it gets back to the, I, I, I do not understand exactly what you're calling woke in this case. And I can only assume that at some point, the fact that it's got a girl as lead character equals woke. I, just, at, at, at some point, it just starts to feel like that's the, that's the, the barrier for what we're using for that word. But I'm not going to go into that rant again. But anyway, um, you know. Primer selling really well, but that's an inconvenient fact, seemingly for both sides of the argument. <laughs> it's a brand new character. It's YA based. It's a girl. So that's inconvenient for one side making this case. And it's also not one of the core characters, not one of the creators that's making a lot of noise, not somebody who's getting a lot of PR about 
whatever various uh, you know agenda they're chasing, which is inconvenient for the other side. So poor little primer just has to sit there kind of by itself and just make sales. But regardless. So Taylor comes in, he posts this little screenshot, and he's like, Superman, son of Kal-El, is doing incredibly well. Thanks for asking. And um, you can you can certainly, uh, I, I don't know, it just, uh, the incredibly well, you know, it, it's disingenuous because, you know, Taylor knows, or I, I would assume knows, that these numbers are changing all the time, and maybe this chart is from some other weird category, but that that's fine. But... You know, when you're looking at the comic and it's not in the top 50 of what DC is doing, you know, incredibly well, really, I I, I wouldn't do that. And, And but the challenge in all this is it comes across to kind of the layman, you know, not John layman, but but just to a layman reading this, it comes across as weirdly defensive for no good reason. I mean, look, let's be honest here. Tom Taylor is one of the biggest names DC's got, arguably at this point, maybe the biggest writer name DC has got. Like it just that's who they're putting their money and their marketing behind. Um, he's basically on a bat book, he's on a Superman book, he's doing these special limited series for them. Like Taylor's doing great. His career is is doing fine. Like I, nobody's like aha tom taylor you're really sucking and your 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 career is on i mean no he's he's doing fine like no no tears for tom taylor he's he's making money he's got books out there some of the books are selling quite well like where's the lie i mean just it's i i don't know it's it's a weird flex because i i don't know who in their right mind is out there talking about taylor being a miserable failure because he's clearly not he's succeeding in this comic industry whether you think the comic industry is doing good or doing bad, he's he's at the top of his game over there. So I, I see he he talks about this stuff in, and and kind of a you know extraordinary amount, which to me doesn't make much sense because he's I don't know you just be confident and secure in the position you've got because you've got a good position. I I mean what what are you doing? It would be like if uh, somebody who's like lives in a mansion was uh, driving into a poorer part of town and just kind of leaning out the uh, the window of their limousine with a megaphone saying, uh, "No, I'm doing great. I you see, I look at the car I'm in. I'm doing great." It's like you you, you got a you got a mansion. You're rich. What are you doing? Like wh- why are you why are you doing this? Anyway, part of why he's doing it is uh, he's responding to a tweet. And in fairness, if you're going to um, you know, call out a creator, or you're going to want to, uh, you know, get them to respond to you. You know, what's the old expression? Like, uh, uh, you know, honey is better than vinegar or uh, sh- whatever. Right? Anyway, <laughs> this is, I do appreciate the bluntness of, you know, at Tom Taylor. Hey, idiot, how's your woke Superman doing these days? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe not the Maybe not the best way to ask that question. I, I don't, it, it's, 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 it's weird. Uh, it's, it's very, very weird. But anyway, so this argument goes back and forth. Um, guy gets ratioed um, in part, mo- mainly because Tom Taylor retweeted it and then, you know, kind of went at him. And, and so you get into the, the standard, uh, you're a troll, you're an idiot, cry more loser, you know, blah, 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 blah. Just, you know, clown gif. You know, and so th- this all goes back and forth. Um, you know, Tom Taylor, because he's, again, very famous and successful in what he's doing. When Tom Taylor retweets it, he gets, you know, almost 2,000 likes and, you know, a bunch of comments and people like, ha you showed that guy. And, uh, you know, it, it does, again, go back to the Tom Taylor. Why do you, why do you care? You're, you're successful. Look at, look at even the response to this, this single tweet. I, I guess it's, you can say I'm dunking on the chuds, but I mean, I, I don't know. The, the echo chamber here is astounding because on one hand you've got, uh, you know, you've got this original, Hey idiot, Tom Taylor tweet, and you've got in it all these different articles from cosmic book news, bounding into comics, another one from bounding into comics, one from outkick, one from Fox Business, one from a site I can't pronounce, Argud, Argid, R-O-Jid. I don't know what the hell that is. But anyway, you've got all these sites who are all talking about the disaster of Woke Superman and how it's not selling well. 
And then on the Tom Taylor side, you got a bunch of people kind of pointing to this tiny little screenshot. By the way, you know, Taylor, if you're listening to this, and I know you do from time to time, um, you know, when you're doing a screenshot, give us, you know, put more of the context, like blow that screenshot out so you can see, is this the top Amazon seller? Is this the top seller? I mean, like, if you're going to debunk this stuff, like, can you debunk it once and for all? Like, invest it, like, it, it, first of all, my, my number one advice is don't get, don't wade into this bullshit in the first place. Just be glad that you're making a lot of money and things are going great. But if you're going to wade into it, just definitively wade into, like, like, put the stats up once and for all, drop the mic to put an end to this crap because this is going to go on to eternity. I don't, I don't love this dance. This is like a, it's like a Tom and Jerry episode where nothing happens. I don't know if you were like me when you would watch uh, Tom and Jerry, you always hoped at some point Tom would just catch and eat that fucking mouse and be done with it. Or Jerry would lure Tom into it, like into the oven, turn it on and roast that cat. Like uh, you needed some resolution. Same feeling with Roadrunner and Coyote. Can you can at some point can one of them just eat murder the other so we can move on with our lives? <laughs> like that's how I feel about this whole argument. It's um I don't know. It all feels very very um it's very performative for sure. And it goes back to the just be comfortable with your success. Just be happy. Look, I mean, I, Cosmic Book News, like, no, no, nothing serious is going on on Cosmic Book News. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sure there's delightful people over there, but, but come on. Cosmic Book News was doing the, you know, Marvel is about to be sold three years ago, and then DC was going to shut down in July, and they ran multiple arg- articles on that one. They did the, you know, nobody is actually ever watching Captain Marvel. It's all just fake tickets. I mean, like, just, just yeah, come on. <laughs> What are you doing? But in, in very much a dad, you know, perch dad advice voice, the key to being successful is just enjoying your success. You know, I, I just, just enjoy it. I'm in a lot of retailer groups where some jackass retailer will talk in the group about, you know, kind of wanting to prove that they're selling more comics than other people. And I know a lot of people, I know a lot of shops in this group, you know, one, as an example, if you're in the Pacific Northwest and you're in Seattle area, Golden Age Collectibles at the Pike Place Market is a mega store that burns through massive amounts of comics. It's a very profitable, very successful store. And if you look in these groups, one thing you'll notice is that uh, Golden Age Collectibles does not post all the time talking about how rich they are. They don't talk about how great their business is. They don't talk about the fact that they're, you know, you're selling, you know, they, you know, Midtown does more business than them, but they're in that, they're, they're, they do well. They, they move a lot of comics in that shop and they don't brag about it because they're not douchebags. <laughs> they're just, they're just happy with their success. And I think, you know, whether, whoever you're a comic creator or whoever you are, you can go a lot farther in life. If you just, you know, are quietly successful, take your money, bank it, move on. You'll also discover that a lot fewer people line up to want to attack you if you just, you know, just, just, just try and be successful. Just, just, just enjoy your success and don't brag about it. And you'll, you're not painting a target on your back, but the second you want everybody to know how awesome and impressive you are, people naturally want to come in and prove that you're not. So just enjoy your sales and all the rest. And, and, that's advice number one. Advice number two is if you're going to drop the hammer, truly drop it. Don't, don't be vague about it. You know, don't, don't kind of insinuate that, ah, you know, I, I am doing incredibly well. But, you know, if you go over to ICV2 this month, it, it doesn't look like you're doing incredibly well. What's the definition of incredibly? Is incredibly just beating yourself? I, like, what, what are we even talking about here? It's, it's, uh, it's a lot of nonsense. But, um, and then just, you know, <laughs> I, 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 this cracks me up on all sides. Uh, people on Twitter who say things like, hey, idiot, and then they get, you know, the reaction that they get. And um, and then they're like, I don't understand why everybody's coming after me. It's like, well, it's, it's because you uh, you said, hey, idiot. That That's why. I don't know. You can make life a lot easier for yourself. I guess that's that's really what I'm saying here. Anyway, there you go. Crazy. Thanks for listening.